What's happening, family? Guten Tag. It's Idols here. Joe and Mark. From Idols. In Idols. In the pad, Idols. Idols band. The band. Um, Idols. We, we'd like to introduce this video. Um, Where we get interviewed. About our new album. Joy is an act of resistance. Of resistance. Of resistance. Released on the 31st of August. That's right. It's this month, but could it be the month that you're watching it in the future? Then it's probably released. There we go. That's some something to think about. Time. Wow. Hey guys, welcome to a new episode of Shoutloud TV. Today we're in Wiesbaden and I'm sitting here with Joe and Mark from Idols. What's happening? How are you doing? Good, really good. Good Abend. Very nice. Nice German skills. So you're Danke schön. Bitte schön. So uh, you're going to release a new album at the end of August. It's called Joy as an Act of Resistance and follows your debut Brutalism, which was released in March uh, last year. Why such haste? Why not? When you do something you love, why stop? That's a good question. Was it rhetorical or do we go yeah. on? Um, we actually started the second album um, immediately after the first. So we started Joy as an Act of Resistance, in theory, three years ago. Um, when, when we finished the first album, Brutalism. But we, we got about a year and a half into um <laughs> we got about a year and a, in, and a half in <laughs> shut the fuck up just just suffer silently we got into the second album about a year and a half in so about a year and a half ago um and we stopped writing and realized we weren't happy and the pressures of uh the kind of unexpected success of the first album got to us as many bands experience when their first album does well. I think we we were overthinking and we stopped enjoying writing. So we started Joy as an Act of Resistance as a brief, the actual phrase Joy as an Act of Resistance and the idea that we would change our lives for the better and then write the second album. So um, that started about a year and a half ago, but we've never stopped writing. We always write and we're always mindful of who we are and what we're doing as a constant to become better artists. I think that's important. I think if you don't do that, you lose you lose um, a connection with your own artistic language. And I think, you know, to become fluent or at least to become close to fluent in your own artistic language, you need to constantly be challenging yourself, questioning who you are, questioning what you do. Um, yeah, in order to improve and to enjoy it. I think we, we just love what we're doing at the moment, so we're, we're not going to stop until we need a break, you know. Yeah, man. I think that um, it, it's kind of, it's not like we're prolific or anything like that. I, I It certainly doesn't feel like we're prolific. We're prolific in writing shit songs. Yeah, I think it, it's... It just you know we we wouldn't have released this album unless it felt right it just once we started we weren't like going we're creating this second album quickly let's do it in a year it was more just a we want to write this album joy is an act of resistance and then we wrote it in time to release it this year we want to do we don't like waiting around once we've written an album we don't like waiting around to record it so we wrote we're, most of this album was written in the kind of two, three months leading up to the recording. As soon as it was written, boom, went into the studio, recorded it. And then I think that's how it will always work. So that the recording of the album is as fresh and as naive to those songs as possible. And then the live playing of it can then be that journey and the songs can evolve in the live forum. Because, I mean, that's fundamentally why we're writing this is so we can come to Germany and, and, and play gigs you know we want to be able to evolve the songs in the live setting but I think they need to be naive and as base as they possibly can be in the recording process so as soon as we've got the next batch of songs together it'll get recorded and then released accordingly so uh, what are the differences between both records I think one of the 
the fundamental differences between the first album and the second album is the practice of mindfulness is apparent in it in that we've given each other a lot of space um a lot of the instruments are supporting each other a lot more so the sound of the first record is a lot about clashing together and about guitars not paying attention to what each other are doing and i think one of the fundamental sounds in this new album is guitars supporting each other or only one guitar playing which probably happens about twice on the first album whereas on this album happens quite a lot i think um you know thematically there's a there's a there's a shift in it's an evolving or sorry an evolution from the first album in that first album deals a lot with constructing something beautiful out of the kind of negative things that were going on in all our lives I would have said and kind of a, a negative reaction to what was happening in our lives at the moment and I think what joy of an act of resistance is is us taking the positives that we've experienced in the last two years you know we've gone out and we we've where we are currently in the process of achieving something that we've always set out to do and that is a really joyous and happy thing and we want to recognize that but use that to further things forward even more and i think that's where joyous and active resistance comes from yeah yeah i mean like is it, it, yeah, it's also about reflection. I think the first album was was like this bombastic, reactionary kind of explosion of all of us going at it at once, which is what something we needed at the time to improve. We needed to to kind of have this catharsis where everything came out of us, and we didn't sit around to think about it at all. And then once that happened, we kind of got that out of our system, and then we. St- started that process again and after a while realized we can't keep doing this because it's indulgent and not improving our lives aren't improving our writing's not improving our music's not improving and we we want to that improvement is just through love and and enjoyment and we wanted we sat down and we like how can we enjoy this now and you enjoy it by pushing yourself as an artist, by challenging yourself as a person, challenging yourself as a partner, as a, as a boyfriend, or as a dentist, as a father, whatever it is, you, to, to really enjoy the fruits of creativity, you need to not get comfortable with success, but like not, like it's, it's almost like you need to keep the momentum going and keep moving forward and reflecting inwardly as a way of improving and that's what we did all right uh, you just said that there are just uh, positive themes on the record aren't you singing about any negative themes like the brexit or something else well yeah i mean the whole album is a, re- a is a reaction to trauma so like we 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 were in a place where we needed to reflect as citizens of Britain. I needed to sit back and reflect on losing my daughter. I needed to reflect on like losing a lot of time and energy on alcohol and drugs. But the way we found a place to do that is by being in the moment, reflecting on who we were as individuals and moving forward. We realized that to achieve what we wanted We had to be mindful of the present and who we are and what our roles are as citizens, what our roles are as musicians, what our roles are as partners and friends. So Brexit occurred at a point where lots of people in our country and further feel lost and dislocated. They don't feel British. They don't feel safe in their country. They feel angry. They feel scared and lots of things which came out in reactionary, panicked behavior that ended up in one of the worst political decisions ever made, well, the worst political decision made in my country's history since I've been alive. Brexit will not be a good thing for anyone involved. So to sit here and shout 
about if it was in the guise of the first album, Brutalism, it might be a reactionary abstraction of the ridiculousness of Brexit to just highlight how insane it is. But as a person who was in a place where we wanted to reflect inwardly as a point of improvement for m myself and the people around me and my art, I had to take a different approach, which is to be mindful of my platform that I'm on in, as a singer in Idols, which is a bigger audience. And people might take more, more attention to what I say. So I wanted to discuss loss, discuss trauma and discuss feeling unsafe and feeling vulnerable in a way that might result in something more positive and something much more productive and positive than Brexit. So I think we you know, I think we've got there. I think we've achieved it with that album. I'm not saying we're gonna change the world or the country we live in, but if I'm gonna make it start a discussion, I wanna start it from a positive point of view. Because that's how we're gonna change minds especially with our oppositions, is by opening ourselves up and being vulnerable to our audience as a point of discussion. Because the right, right, you know, people in the right aren't gonna change their views or change their ideologies if we just attack them. It just doesn't work like that. It's never, I, I got taught that fable of the sun and the wind trying to get the guy's jacket off when I was like four. You don't change people's ideologies or change people's hearts or minds by attacking them and calling them stupid and racist. Mm -hmm. If I think someone is stupid and racist and I want to change both of our outlooks and improve our lives, I need to be open to them and be vulnerable to them as a, as a point of inclusivity, as a point of change. Yeah, I think uh, that you totally achieved it with uh, the record. For example, um, starting a dialogue uh, with... Uh, the song Danny Nedelko and uh, the personalization of uh, the refugee issue, if you can call it so, um, by Danny Nedelko. I think that's an example for starting a dialogue yeah, with a good point thank of view. You. I'm, I'm glad you, you, you see that. I mean, uh, uh, like, I wanted it to be as naive and childlike as possible. The lyrics are very naive and very childish because That's the, the most important thing that people need to be reminded of in politics or political debates, is that it's about the individual's welfare. And that comes down to wanting to treat people how you want to be treated. Give someone compassion, show people love. Open your doors and minds to people that don't have the privileges that you do. It's that simple. I don't want to bring my children up, if I'm lucky enough to have children. I don't want to bring them up thinking that their privileges are, are an entitlement. Like, I, I, have, I have a nice house and, and food on my table because I deserve it. It's because the, you know, the infrastructure around us has kept us safe and allowed me to get a job. Because I'm white, because I'm a man, because I'm middle class, because I'm in Britain. There's a whole heap of things that I can appreciate that have got me to a place that's safe where I can live out a life where my welfare will never, well, it could be, but is, is much less likely to be disheveled by war or fascism or poverty even, which is an amazing thing. But I need to, I need to show my appreciation by living my life out fairly and treating other people the way I've been treated, which is with privilege and compassion. And, and just good welfare. So I think, you know, it's, it's, for me it's that simple, but I can only open that discussion by telling people what I love. If I tell them what they should love, then I've lost, because I'm not God and I'm not a politician. I'm just a boy with a microphone. <laughs> yeah, so uh, let's dig a little bit deeper into the record. Uh, I would like to learn something about the background uh, of some subjects and also uh, musical parts. Uh, first of all, uh, the sustained intro and the following break uh, in the first song, Colossus. Yeah. How so did this come together? Um, this song was... That's pretty much my song. So I think I should take the mic. 
Actually, let's just take that off him for a second. We wrote this song did, as yeah. a collective. No, 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 it was mainly you and I actually. Yeah, so it was. Uh, we started out. I think what we were talking, we were touching a lot at the time on the themes of masculinity, um, and we were talking about the idea of having something tribal or something very um, kind of. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? As human as like primal. A primal. That's the word. Thank you. See, sure he's good. With, he's good with the words. Hold on, primal. He's prim- primal as possible. So we wanted something kind of like beating. Like this, so we start. We started off with with that. Dev wasn't there, so Joe played bass, which is why the bass line is good. <laughs> nah, simple. Um, and then we we went through the song, and, and it, it's a it's a big step away from what we normally do. And we do like to work within. Are you familiar with the theory of an Overton window? It's basically how far you can go without it being a ridiculous idea for, for it to be acceptable. And this is like getting quite far to the edge of where we can be, you know, as as Swansea or as like post-Rocky or something like that as we can go. And well, we, the, the, uh, the word we were using at the time, Swansea, like it's, we got comp- the song's been compared to Swans since, the out, since that song's come out. But the word we were using at the time was cinematic. We wanted to have a cinematic opener and then as we were writing in the, in the room, this was written within like 15 minutes, I think, yeah. this song. Like we got to a point where it built and built and built and then we stopped. And we realized like, we were like, what the fuck are we doing? And you discussed the over and window. And then I suggested that we just, it's like a red herring. And we just fucking went write and just write an, an idol's ga- a track, garage track. Boom. And so we, we did that. We literally just wrote it on the spot. It was just like, mm. you went, uh, uh, and we are all kind of like, oh, uh, 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 boom, and just did it like that. And that's that's that song, that where that, where that came from. All right, uh, next, uh, the James Bond reference in uh, I'm Scum. What do you want to know? Um, what do you want to say with it? Well, that James Bond is the epitome of a lot to, of the ideological implants in British culture that is wrong with British culture. Nationalistic pride, machismo, misogyny, racism, um, all celebrated through the guise of a man that doesn't exist. Um, Obsession with technology that's then utilized for violence. Um, I don't know, it's just, it's, it's just, it's like, He's uh, like the most celebrated fictional character in British culture, and it's probably one of the most problematic, definitely one of the most problematic, and like completely shallow and awful. So I just I just threw it in there because I fucking hate James Bond. I don't get it. Yeah, I think it's interesting because everybody knows James Bond, and mm. I don't think that any person so far criticized uh, him in a song. Oh, I didn't notice no, it. No, I, 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 I hope I hope I'm the first. Maybe Jason Williams from Sleaford Mods has, and I've just subconsciously stolen it, turned it into a middle class song. Mm. What would be a good reference to Sleaford Mods? What would be a good reference to Sleaford Mods? Uh, that you're also criticizing uh, James Bond, if they did before. Oh no, they haven't. And you didn't. They haven't. Know. I mean, it, it, I was just joking. Haven't they? They might have. I don't know. If you came up with it, they probably have. Joking. I've never listened to a Sleep of Mod song, so I can. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. You're I'm like a, 70% in there. I am 70%, Jason Williams. 70%. 70, yeah. Um, yeah, no, like, uh, I, I, I was a joke. I don't know what it is. He. A joy as an act of resistance. Joy as an act of resistance. Yeah, I Very mean... Very loose with that today, Joe. <laughs> the joy as an act of resistance. Fuck off. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, it's a reference. I don't know. I just throw stuff in that I don't like. Yeah. I'm a massive Sleeve of Mods fan, though. That's, that's the stone cold truth. They are very good. They're amazing, yeah. Yeah. So, and uh, the third and last thing, uh, the criticism against the stereoty- stereotypical uh, role image of men in Samaritans. Yeah. Samaritans? Samaritans, yeah. Samaritans. 
Um, well, I again, like all my songs, I just try and boil it down to the most simplistic and naive version um, of the angle or perspective of the issue that I'm talking about as a way of opening a conversation. So obviously, I was reading a book called, called The Descent of Man at the time, still am, um, slow reader. Um, so I was reading The Descent of Man by Grayson Perry, who's a British artist, um, transvestite British artist, um, who questions masculinity in his art all the time, and gender, gender politics, gender roles, sexual politics, and um, Britishness, and lots of things he discusses as identity politics, basically, in his art. And this book's all about masculinity and the, the issues that it causes. And, and he discusses it beautifully. And it inspired me to write a song because he articulated something that I've been thinking all of my life. And I felt a dislocation and, a, and I felt lonely in my life. And I didn't really understand why until I went to counseling or therapy. And I read that book and it kind of put a few things in its place and allowed me to write that song. Um, so yeah, it's just, these are things that seem benign and so simple and are repeated to children every day. But the, the, the long-term effects and the dangerous nature of saying man up or don't cry or whatever it is, is dangerous and causes people, not just men, but often men, more, more men than people should be comfortable with to feel isolated in their own bodies, trapped behind a mask that they're told to put on every day, all their lives, and ends up in violence, ends up in war. 90% 90, 90 of violent crime in Britain is caused, is committed. That's it. That's something that needs to be looked at. 45%, no, no, sorry. So the biggest killer of, of men under 45 in Britain is suicide. It needs to be looked at. This is the pattern that emerges. And for me, thanks to people like Roland Barthes and people like that, opening discussion and talking about the meanings behind populace and popular culture, boiling it down to the most simple and repeated, like, points of that culture are normally the cause. So I just want to uh, talk about it and open it up. Um, yeah. I, 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 I waffled, but um, yeah. What, just not? Yeah. yeah. No, you didn't, you were good, that was concise. Thank you. Okay, um, we're coming closer to the end of the interview. This is going to be my oh, last question. come on, man. Yeah. Um, what is your opinion of uh, provocation as a stylistic device? Provocation yes. as a stylistic device. Um, I would say that uh, is your question asking whether or not we u utilize provocation? Because I don't. I don't feel that we're provocative. I feel that we utilize. No, just in general. Just in general. Um, can I go first? You can go first. I think one of the things is uh, like antagonizing people and being anti, which I am. I am very much on the left side of politics. I'm unapologetically liberal and not anywhere near central, central left at all. But I feel that like, like a Trojan horse, culturally as artists, if you want to penetrate people's ideologies and hearts and minds you you can't do it by attack so i think our our use of provocation comes in the violence of the tone of our music it comes from the instrumentation we use the the tonal and musical tool of violence as a vehicle to get people's attention but what i don't want to do is provoke um, reactionary behavior 
from my lyrics or content i think and and as people we we want open discussion so i think we we try and provoke people's attention with our music and then thematically and lyrically we um try and just derobe slowly and open open up and try and be vulnerable to our audiences by being naive and simplistic and then we can you know just go forward as a dialogue rather than just us go fuck you you're stupid because it's it's benign and net has never worked yeah. it just makes the left more left and the right more right i think that's why i got confused because I, I i don't i don't think that what we do is provocative i think that we utilize violence um in our in our art to kind of to show to show it up and to kind of expose things in our in our day to day that is violent but i don't think we're trying to use that in a sense in a provocative way for people what's going on here um and in a, in a provocative way i don't think we're i don't think we're a shock band i don't think we want to kind of make someone go oh i disagree with that or oh that's a bit of a controversial thing to say because i don't think we say controversial things i think we're you know we we're holding up a mirror to our audience and saying this stuff happens on a day-to-day -day basis oftentimes we like to break it down as you said in the most base and simple simplistic forms because that way you can't get confused you can't be provocative you can't be you know you break it down into the most straightforward down the way and say this is how it is think if you think about it this is how it is and i don't think there's anything controversial about that to me provocative means controversial but maybe i'm getting it wrong well i think it, that, that's the question what does it mean to you well, that's what it means to me come here wasp come to me um in the same breath like i find provocative art and music amazing fascinating and exciting like Sleaford Mods is a great example um, uh, Armando Iannucci's uh, The Death of Stalin like where and Mike Lee and things like that where like you know the, the conversation is opened up from a very staunch standpoint where you know exactly what Sleeper Mods are saying, you know exactly what Armando Iannucci is saying. Um, I'm trying to think of other examples, but like, it's great, but it's not me. I'm not someone who wants to close doors. I don't want to, like, it would just wouldn't be honest of me to do that. But I, we, I enjoy provocative stuff. Mm. I like, I love, I love kind of ferocious political thinkers, Dennis, Skinner is my favorite British politician and he is only provocative. He is only completely left wing and like, you know, ferocious in that. But it's not me, that's just not how I am. It's not moving me as a person. Conflict for me is something that I want to weave. I don't just want conflict and then it ends with no result. I want, I want progress. I think that like a lot, a lot of the art that that we enjoy and hopefully are creating is um, you know it uses viol violence as a tool. So things like Francis Bacon, I was thinking whenever you were saying that. Mm. But I find and I think I I personally get a lot of catharsis from things like that. I think that like it it scratches that itch within me and kind of helps me it's a form of release but i think that a lot a lot of um provocative controversial each style stuff dates really quickly like i think if you look at like art like um dinos and mark chapman which people would have considered provocative i think it, it, it's it's kind of dated now and it's a bit like you can tell when that was you can tell that's like kind of late 90s you know at their peak i mean they're still creating art now and you know the elements of it is good but like the the other thing is though like put in in the political climate of britain like and europe and america is that like provocation is rife the internet has given everyone a platform to just poke the fire you're this you're that and everyone's provoking each other but nothing's happening and now at a point of loss where British people, Europeans and Americans are just fucking lost. 
we need a bit of inclusivity. We need a bit of congregation of minds. We like, what's the point in making this situation more separatist than it already is? We don't need any more tribal thinking. We don't need to throw any more stones or create more of an us and them ideology. What we need is togetherness. We need community. And you can't do that by provoking people. Great, it's nice to be able to enjoy provocative art as a tourist, but I don't want to be involved in it. I don't want to be part of that fire. I want to put it out with this microphone. So uh, just be nice, don't be violent, and talk to each other. Be good, don't be bad. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, baby. <laughs> be happy, don't be sad. Thank you, baked potato. If you, you want, want to make it to the, the day, day, just listen to what the baked potato says. B a k e d p o t a t o. Baked potato. I think that's a wonderful end for the interview. Thank you, Sean. Thank you very much, and good luck with your new record. Thank you. Come on, Nigel. You're, 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 you're clearly better at this than I am. <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye. August 31st. Joy is an act. 2018. Idols. The act of resistance is joy. Go. Go for it. Schnell. In all major musical outlets. Shut the fuck up. Stop talking. The album, Joy is an Act of Resistance. Go.